Let's tell you a little bit more about a story about the Peregrine Mission 1. It is attempting to become the first US lunar lander since Apollo 17, uh, more than 50 years ago. Uh, this is the live shot that we are getting from NASA. It's going to take off very, very soon. Our science correspondent, Thomas Moore, has more on this. Thomas, uh, what are they trying to achieve here? Just explain it to us in simple terms. Yeah, you're looking at the United Launch Alliance Vulcan Centaur on Cape uh, Canaveral in Florida there. It's due for launch any minute now. Uh, the launch window is about 45 minutes. It has to be quite precise in order to get to the moon at a point and, uh, so that it can enter orbit and it will be going for a landing, they hope, on the 23rd of February. Now, this is a really interesting mission, not just because it's the first uh, US uh, lander to go to the moon uh, since Apollo 17 in December uh, 1972, but this time NASA is not at the controls. It has bought a ticket to ride. It has five instruments on board, but it is paying a private US company to develop the rocket it and another one to uh, to actually uh, build design uh, and and control the lander now this is controversial because alongside those instruments there will be commercial payloads too in, including uh, some human remains that have been cremated uh, and are being taken to the moon and indeed also a marketing stunt by a sports drink manufacturer and many scientists feel this is all a little bit icky, um, but uh, for NASA, it means they can control the cost, so they're paying just $108 million to get to the moon, which is an absolute bargain. But to get to such a low price, they are taking a massive gamble here. That rocket has never flown before. The lander has never attempted uh, to, to leave Earth's orbit before. So this technology is, is really being tested well beyond its uh, uh, limits as, as far as uh, the existing tests down here on Earth. So it'll be interesting to see whether this actually happens. We know that getting to space isn't easy. Um, but uh, United Launch Alliance have flown other designs of rocket before, just, just not this one. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And in terms of what, of what NASA will, will benefit, the fact that they are sort of outsourcing various elements of it, um, it, it I mean, it's still going to be of enormous scientific benefit to NASA, isn't it? Yes, I mean, this isn't a purely scientific mission. They don't have a particular goal, but they have got five instruments on board, including one designed uh, at the Open University in Milton Keynes, uh, where they have an instrument that will be looking at the, the moon's extraordinarily thin atmosphere and trying to look at what happens to water molecules. OK, uh, thanks so much, Thomas. So it's one minute to launch uh, before this United Launch Alliance from Cape Canaveral in Florida sets off, hoping to land on the moon on the 23rd of February. Let's listen in. Thirty. BE4 start bots, go. Status check. Go Vulcan. Go Centaur. Go Peregrine. 15. Then T minus 10, nine. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have ignition. and liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. Two good SRBs, hitting peak pressure on the SRBs. Everything looking good. programs in coming into normal rates for that event. We have good hydraulic pressure on both engines, good chamber pressure on both engines, everything looking good. Coming up on 60 seconds into the flight, everything looking good. Two good engines, two good SRBs. 
Body rates look good, nice and smooth. And we've hit our first throttle point on the BE-4. Is everything looking good? And we have passed through Mach 1. We are now supersonic, coming up on max Q. That max dynamic pressure. Everything looking good. We're rolling off on the SRBs. And we have cutoff on the SRBs, coming up on jettison in approximately 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to SRB jet, BE-4s continue to operate nominally. Seeing expected PU activity on the boost remains. And we have separation of both SRBs. Everything looking good. BE-4s continue to operate normally. Coming up on two minutes into the mission. We are now 17 miles in altitude. We just heard confirmation of solid rocket booster jettison. We have about three minutes until we... Well, there, a successful launch of the United Launch uh, Alliance from Cape Canaveral, uh, the Peregrine mission. Let's bring in our science correspondent, Thomas Moore. Thomas, what are the big hurdles, the, the milestones that this rocket will will have to overcome in the next few minutes and hours that well, we it know it'll be, it's been a success? Yes, yeah, so far so good, but it has to get to, to orbit. It's got a few minutes to, to, to go yet. Uh, then it will do one uh, rotation around the Earth, then the Peregrine uh, Mission 1 uh, lander will separate from the rocket uh, and will veer off be slingshot towards the moon, uh, travelling at very high speed, while the rocket and uh, human remains and DNA from, from 60 people, including Star Trek creator Gene Rodenberry and three other Star Trek uh, actors, astronauts and, and various others, all that will head towards the, the sun, where it, the, the rocket and, and those remains will remain in, in perpetual uh, orbit, uh, something that uh, they clearly wanted to do, be part of uh, the celestial makeup. Um, the, the lander itself uh, will then head to the moon. It will do a series of orbits around the moon uh, while it tries to uh, find the, the exact spot that it wants to land. It's waiting for sunrise, so the lighting conditions are, are right over over there and then on the 23rd of February it will attempt a robotic landing uh, and then it will, it will remain there for, for a series of days uh, while all those uh, scientific experiments are undertaken.